Smooth Criminal. Absolute tune by the King of Pop himself. And if you want to play this song, you're going to have to become the king of a metronome because you've got to be tight as hell. So as I've already mentioned, if you're looking to play this song note for note exactly right, then props to you. But this isn't the right tutorial because what we're going to be doing here is my interpretation of this song if I was to play this live and certain things I'd pay attention to to try and get the drumming part across as well as possible, potentially in a very short amount of time if you don't have much time to practice it. Jumping straight into the introduction, if you're playing this in a live scenario, you're going to think of this very differently to if you're trying to match the record, because on the record, there's no point of reference whatsoever for when this crash comes in, really. So, if you're playing this live with a band, you'd probably choose one person, potentially you, as you're the drummer, to make sure that everyone is on the same pulse, same count in. Remembering that this crash comes in on the and of four. One, two, three, four. Digga, 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 doo, doo. Digga, doo, doo. And then you're straight in, but make sure that count in is there being done by somebody. It doesn't really matter who, just not the singer. All right, no beef, just not the singer. Like I said before, I'm not going to teach you how to play this note for note, but I'm going to teach you how to interpret it. And the first thing you have to do is listen to how the drums actually sound. What you've got going on, to my ears anyway, is a live hi-hat, but we've got a sampled snare going on and potentially even a sampled kick or layered kicks or whatever is going on in this song. However, if you don't have a sample pad, don't panic too much. The more important thing is the groove and the tightness of the groove. This is where you're going to want to practice this with a metronome because this isn't your conventional 16th note groove. It's kind of got bits and bobs missing out of it, which makes it sound amazing if you play it really tightly. If you don't, it sounds a bit confusing and a bit muddled. Another song that does this amazingly well is Ain't Nobody by Shaka Khan. Something like that, but do you notice that space in there just adds a little bit of extra air within the song instead of just It just sounds so much cooler if you add that extra gap in there Just mm, makes it really sit and groove way nicer same thing is going on here with smooth criminal if you're in a pinch, it's going to be pretty hard to get this nailed completely down. But if you want to get it down, then sit with a metronome for as long as you can and get it nice and comfortable. If you want to get this as accurate as you can possibly get it in terms of timing and to really sink in with that click, I'd use a 16th note one instead of a quarter note one. Just means you have to be hyper accurate, otherwise it's really obvious when you're out. That open hi-hat is on the and of four, but the tricky part here is going to be playing nothing on the one except from that hi-hat foot. One, no bass drum, anywhere near beat one in that next bar, and that will th probably throw you off because it definitely threw me off. Now, even if you're kind of vaguely improvising with this 16th note part, or you want to simplify it and just keep it consistent, which it does do later in the song, so it's not technically wrong, make sure you have that open hi-hat going on the and of four, and you leave beat one reasonably open. You've got hi-hats on the and and the uh of beat one, but make sure you don't play a bass drum or anything like that. As long as you've got those fundamental key elements going on, and the bass drum pattern that's consistently through it, you should be pretty good. So like I say, you can get away with 16th notes consistently. Something like that. If you've got that, you've got most of the basis of the song down. Then you can start to make it more intricate and really make it more accurate if you'd like to. One other little thing with this main group, because we're going to be playing it a lot in this song, to make it sound more like a drum machine, make sure you keep these hi-hats really nice and consistent and level dynamically. Dynamics means volume, so just keep all the volume of all those notes as steady as you can.
And one final thing, and I will stop talking about this groove in a minute. Make sure not only are your hands nice and synced up, the bass drum is really synced up with everything else. You've got to make sure this entire groove is locked. And like I said before, the way you can achieve that is using a 16th note metronome because it will really force you to make things nice and accurate. Another thing you can do is record yourself doing it and listen back because you'll be able to hear all those mistakes that your brain seems to or manages to block out while you're playing and makes you sound like a rock god. So I suggest you do that as a good exercise anyway. So there you have it. This is how I'd personally interpret Smooth Criminal. However, of course, there's all sorts of different ways you could interpret this. This isn't a note-for-note -note tutorial. If you want that kind of thing, feel free to check out loads of the other ones on YouTube. But if you want the full score, then feel free to check out the link below. Hello everybody, this is Emma from the future, telling you that there are more videos like the one you just watched about more famous songs. So if you want to check that out, the playlist is here. Enjoy.